Hello, everybody. Welcome to our presentation on Microsoft PowerPoint, the basics. My name is Tom Fregali. I'm a Microsoft certified trainer and I'm a Microsoft certified expert in Office. So I've been doing this for a long time and uh, you can find me through the forum through which you're watching the webinar. Uh, I'm available for private webinars, consulting, uh, anything like that. So you can find me through the forum that you're, you're watching the webinar or you can also find me online. So today we're going to talk about a great topic using Microsoft PowerPoint and going over the basics. So many of us have to do presentations for lots of different reasons, maybe training, sales, or just a meeting at work, or maybe a meeting at your church. And PowerPoint has become the default presentation tool uh, in the industry. So today we're going to show you how to, uh, you know, we'll take a tour of the PowerPoint screen. I'll show you how to add slides. We'll talk about how to use the PowerPoint views and go back and forth among those. We'll talk about how to add text to your slides. And then what we're looking at right now is a bullet list. I'll show you how to make that in PowerPoint and how to enhance that. We'll talk about making number list, adding pictures and other graphics to your slides, change the layout in the background of your slide and uh, topics like that. So we're really going to start with the PowerPoint basics. So I'm actually running PowerPoint right now. So um, when you're running your show, I'm going to hit the escape key. And then that'll take me back to where we can build uh, the PowerPoint presentation. And I'm actually going to start a new presentation from scratch. So now sometimes during the presentation, I'll make my mouse do that. So you can find out where my mouse is. And sometimes if I have to I'll also zoom in. So let's make a new PowerPoint presentation. I'll pick on file and I'll pick on new. And then here I will use a blank presentation. As you notice, there's some templates that are built right in. And even if you, if you just start with a blank presentation, you can always add one of those templates later on. And I'll show you how to do that. So let's go into a blank presentation. Now, um, so let's go over the, the tour of the screen here. I am using PowerPoint 2016, which uh, at the time of this recording, it is the most recent version of PowerPoint. If you have Office 365, that's the version of PowerPoint that you would have. If you have PowerPoint 2013 or a PowerPoint 2010, the screen should look pretty similar to there as well. Now, uh, here we have uh, the menus. So if I pick on uh, Insert, notice how the whole toolbar changes with different icons. Or if I pick on Design, the whole toolbar changes. So uh, that structure started in PowerPoint 2007. So you should have similar menus. Now these days, the menus are called tabs. So if, uh, if you're reading documentation somewhere and it says pick on the insert tab, it's really right there. And notice when I pick on the different tabs, the whole toolbar changes. Now the new word for the toolbar is called uh, the ribbon. If you see the word ribbon, it's just where all the icons are. We used to call that the toolbar, now it's called the ribbon. Now look at the very top of the screen. This is called the quick access toolbar. You have a couple icons up there. We have save and undo and redo. Uh, now the quick access toolbar stays up there all the time. And this way you can uh, make sure that your favorite icons are always available. Let me show you a couple quick ways to add things to your quick access toolbar. Now in this case, I'm gonna zoom in for a second. And we'll, we'll do a quick zoom in, good. Uh, now, here's the magnifier, and I can minimize that window. Uh, so, notice my mouse. I'm going to go to the arrow to the right of the Quick Access Toolbar and click there. And now I can just click on any one of those. So, for example, I'll pick on the word uh, Open. And now the Open icon is now on the Quick Access Toolbar. So, that's quick and easy. If I just click on the arrow to the right of the Quick Access Toolbar, then I could just pick any one of those. So this time we'll do print preview. And notice how the print icon is now in the quick access toolbar. Now, if you want to remove something from the quick access toolbar, I can just right click on that and then say remove from the quick access toolbar. Now here's another quick way to add things onto that. In this case, I want to pick on the home menu. 
Now the home menu has a lot of your popular commands like cut and paste and copy and paste and so on. Uh, so all you have to do here is right click on one of your favorite icons. I'm going to right click on copy and I'll say add to quick access toolbar. And now that one is up there as well. Uh, so all you have to do is right click on your favorite icons. I'm going to right click on cut. I'll say add a quick access toolbar. And now that one is up there. So I just showed you two quick ways to add things to the quick access toolbar. Uh, I'm going to zoom back out again. Good. All right. So looking good. Now, in this case, here we are on the first slide. Now, the presentation is made up of uh, one slide or it could be as many as you wanted to. Now, when you first start a presentation, you can see the how we're on the first slide. Now, you're going to find that PowerPoint is fairly intuitive. So here it says click to add title. So I'm going to click there and I'll type in uh, PowerPoint presentation. Uh, by the way, the spell checker is built in as well. Uh, so just like it would be in Word or Excel. Now I'll click here to say click to add subtitle and I'll say basics. And now we have our first slide. Now uh, I'm going to show you, of course, how to enhance that slide and add some different things onto there. Now your presentation, of course, will have more than one slide. So let's add some more slides. I'll pick on the home menu up top. And then I'll come over here and I'll pick on the word new slide or you pick on that little asterisk. And now we are on a new slide. So uh, building, adding new slides is not going to be difficult. Now I can see where adding a new slide uh, would be something that I'll do all the time. So that might be something I would add to my quick access toolbar, for example. So I'll right click on that icon, right click, and I'll say add to a uh, quick access toolbar. And now the new slide icon is right up there. Now I want to show you something right next to where it says new slide. I can change the layout of the slide and there's different layouts. Now this layout is called title and content, which means it'll have a title and then it'll have a, a content here in the middle. Now, just because you pick one of those layouts, you, you're not stuck with that format. It just gives you an idea of what the, the slide format should look like, but you can always add things to that slide, but the layouts just kind of give you a, um, an idea for that slide. Now, let me show you a trick here. If I click in the pull down where it says new slide, I can add a new slide and change the layout for that new slide at the same time. So that'll save you a step. Instead of adding a new slide and then changing the layout, I can pick on the pull down where it says new slide and then pick one of the layouts and then it'll add a new slide with that layout at the same time. So that'll save you a step. Now I like the layout of this slide. So we'll say basics. And then in this presentation, we're going to talk about those things. I'll, I'll, uh, we'll talk about the tour. Now you see how this slide will already have the bullet list built right in. And then I'll show you how to add bullet lists to your own slides as well. I'll talk about adding slides. Uh, we'll talk about managing text. I'm just typing these in just to show you how relatively e easy it is to uh, build your slides. And then we'll talk about bullet list, which we're in right now, but I'll show you how to enhance that. Each time that I hit the enter key, it'll go to the next line on the bullet, as you can see. I will talk about number list. And we'll talk about uh, the slide uh, design and the background. So you can see I'm starting to build this slide without a problem. Now I see that I have an extra line here. So I'll click on that line and then I could just hit my delete key. No problem with that. So now we have a nice slide. So next let's talk about, well, we're going to add a new slide. So I'll pick on the home menu and I'll pick on new slide, or I could have picked on my icon that I added to the quick access toolbar as well. By the way, notice how when I move my mouse there, it has a keyboard shortcut. So another way to add a new slide is control M. If you move your mouse around some of the icons, if it does have a keyboard shortcut, it'll, it'll tell you what that is. So for example, cut is control X, copy is control C and so on. 
uh, we probably know save, save as control S. All right, so when it has a keyboard shortcut, it'll show you that when you move your mouse uh, across these icons. Bold is control B and so on. All right, so let's add another new slide. I'll pick on new slide again. Now this time, I'm gonna go for a blank layout. I'm gonna pick on the pull down where it says layout and I'm gonna just make it a blank slide. And now there's nothing on there, as you can see. Now I'm gonna to try to type onto this slide. I'm gonna click right in the middle and I'll try to type and it actually is not letting me do that. If you want to add text to down. your slide, you have to add a text box. Let's do that. So I'm going to come up here and I'll pick on the insert menu, insert. And then we come over here and we pick on the word text box. And then in this case, I'm going to go ahead and click uh, onto that slide. Let's add another text box. I'll pick on insert and I'll pick on a uh, text box. In this case, I'll type in PowerPoint basics. Good. Now uh, let's add another text box. I'll pick on uh, insert and then text box again. And then I'll type in my name. And my name is Tom for Gally. All right, so we have a couple different text boxes. Now, in this case, let me show you a couple tricks with these. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on that text box, and you can see the actual box when we click on it. Now, watch how I'm going to resize that. I'm going to go to the sizing handle. Uh, I'm going to go to the sizing handle on the right. I'm going to hold down my left mouse button and drag it over to the left, and watch what happens. Now, you can see how that text is vertical. Right, so that was an interesting uh, choice. Let, let's try that again. If I get the sizing handle on the right and drag it to the right, now it'll become horizontal again. So you get the sizing handle on the left of the uh, on the right side of the text box. You hold down your left mouse button and drag it to the left, and it becomes horizontal. I, uh, I mean, yeah. Uh, uh, and then if I drag it out, see how that's working for you. Now another thing you can do is you can rotate your text this way. You move your mouse to that little circle right there. Your mouse would become a circle. You hold down your left mouse button, and then you can rotate the text that way as well. See what's happening? So you can do that with any of your text boxes. Now I can move these text boxes around. You click on the text box, you move your mouse to the edge of the text box like that, and you can just drag it from there. Now let's say I wanted to make sure that these text boxes would be lined up. What you'll do is, you click on the first one. Now you're going to hold down your shift key. And then I picked on the second one. And then I, I still have my shift key held down. And I'll pick on the third one. So when you hold down your shift key, then you can do what we call a multiple selection, just like in Word or in PowerPoint. Now I like to line those three items uh, so that they're lined up. Now, of course, we can move those manually. But here's maybe a quicker way. Uh, I'm going to come up here and pick on the format menu. See it? I'll pick on format. And then over on the format menu, I'll pick on the word align. And then I'll say align left. And now they're actually lined up with each other. So you certainly could try to move them manually. But that's a great little trick. Uh, you, you select your text boxes or your different objects in your slide. And then I picked on the word format. And I picked on align and align left. Now, if the items were next to each other, then I might align the top or the middle or the bottom. But when the items are on top of each other, I'd say align left, center, or right. And you can try those. Now, here's another one that you might want to know about. I want to make those equally spaced. Of course, I can try to move them, but here's how we can make sure they're going to be equally spaced. By the way, here's another way to select multiple objects. Right now, I don't have anything selected. I'm going to start my mouse up here and then hold down my left mouse button and just kind of draw a rectangle around those items. And now they'll be selected that way as well. Uh, once they're selected, let's pick on the format menu again. Then I'll come over here and I'll pick on the word align. And now let's try this one. We're going to distribute vertically. Let's see what that does. Yeah, did you see how they moved? And now, um, now they're perfectly spaced. I'm going to undo that. Here's undo up there, of course. 
see see how they're not really equally spaced right now so i'm going to select all the items then i'll pick on the align menu under the format tab then i'll say distribute vertically and watch closely the one that says uh, powerpoint basics notice how it did move and now they're perfectly equally spaced so this is what i meant by managing your text on your slide to add text to your slide we have to add a text box and you can have as many text boxes on your slide as you need. So if I go back to the other slides, by the way, notice how you have your slide thumbnails over on the left hand side. We're going to talk about uh, managing the, uh, the views in just a second. Right now we're in a view that's called normal view. So if I click on this one, now you can see that we're on slide two. In fact, look down here at the bottom. Let me zoom in on that for a second. And now notice down here it says slide two of, of three. So it always tells you what slide that you're on down at the bottom. I'll zoom back out again. Any Anytime that you see text on your slide, it will be because it's in a text box. So if I click on the word basics right there, then you'll see the text box. Or if I pick where it says tour, you can see those are on a text box as well. Now let's take a minute to look at our PowerPoint views. Right now, this is called normal view. Normal view is where we can change one slide at a time. Now, um, when I learned PowerPoint a long time ago, this view was more prominent. The next one I'm going to show you is called uh, Slide Share View. So I'll pick on the View menu, View. Then we're going to come over here uh, and I'll pick on Slide Sorter View. Now, Slide Sorter View shows you the thumbnails in this way. Because the thumbnails now appear on the left side of the normal view, we don't use the slide sort of view as much as we used to, but this is the way we used to reorganize the slides and, 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 uh, and do a lot of things there. Once in a while, I'll still use slide sort of view, but because the thumbnails are now on the left side of the normal view, we don't use this one as much. Uh, I'm going to double click on one of the slides here, double click, and that'll bring me back to normal view, as you can see. Now, uh, let's see another view. This is called the notes page. Notice how I'm on the view menu. And I'll pick in the word notes page right there. So this would be excellent for the presenter. So imagine I would print out this uh, page and I'll show you how to print it out. And then the top of the uh, page would be the actual slide and the bottom of the page would be the notes for the presenter. Okay. So this is for the presenter only. So I'm going to click here where it says click to add text and I'll say uh, these are the topics for the presentation you know you would put whatever notes in there that you wanted to so i'll show you how to print this uh, so this is called the notes page and obviously the top of the page will be the slide and the bottom of the page will be the, for the notes for the presenter only so let's go back to normal view i'll pick on view and i'll pick on the word normal over here now, let's see how we would print that presentation to show the notes. Of course, you want to be able to print it in general. So if I pick on File, and if I pick on Print, uh, so watch my screen. I'm going to come over here and pick on the word Settings. So I can print all slides or just print the current slide. We can also print a custom range. If you, if you didn't want to print all the slides, you could do custom range. But Look at the uh, the slide this time. If I pick on full page slides, that will print one page, one slide per page. Or here is where I can print the notes page. And then you can see how it would print, just like I just showed you. That's for the presenter only. All right, so nobody else would see that copy of the presentation except for the presenter. Now here's another thing that we can do. Notice where my mouse just went. I can also make uh, handouts for the audience and then a really popular one will be three slides per page. And now notice how it did put three slides in that page. And then it even gave the notes uh, lines for the notes for the audience. So that's what I would hand out to the actual audience. And the way I got there was over here. If you, pin, if you print the full page slides, it'll print one uh, slide per page. Here's the notes page. And then you can see how it actually prints the notes. or here is also where I can make handouts 
Now you can try some of the other ones, but one that people use a lot is the one that says three slides. That it did make three slides on that. And then notice how there's even lines for the notes for the audience. So I like that a lot. A very popular choice there. You can try nine or any of the others as well. Let's go back to the full page slides. Uh, now, as far as the color, if, if you did have a, a color printer, you can print that in color or you can print it in grayscale if you just had a black and white printer. And by the way, the grayscale will show up in shades of gray and that might, you know, uh, it'll, it'll be cheaper to, to do that way rather than printing in color, as you know. So now when we're done with the screen, we'll come up here and pick on the arrow. Of course, the way I got to that screen was file and then print. Now, when you want to when, when you want to run the presentation, then we're going to go into slideshow mode. Now, this one you'll use a lot. You can see how we're making new slides, and we're going to continue it along that path, of course. But when you want to run the presentation, you pick on the slideshow menu. Then you come over here. You can either say from the beginning, and that'll run it from slide number one. Or let's say I just want to see what the current slide is going to look like. Then I might say from the current slide over here. Let's see what it looks like if we say from the beginning. Now notice how the slide uh, fills the screen. If your computer is connected to a projector, then that's what the audience would see as well. Notice how it's not moving to the next slide automatically. Now there is a way to move that to the next slide automatically. That's called a transition. And then we're going to cover that in the Beyond the Basics presentation that should be available on the same forum. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, to, to move to the next slide, there's several ways you can do that. If you hit the down arrow key on your keyboard, that'll take you to the next slide. Now I'm on the next slide. If I hit the up arrow key, that'll take you back to the previous slide. Some other keys that work on your keyboard is the left and right arrow keys. Now I'll hit the right arrow key. That'll take me to the next slide. And then the left arrow key will take you to your previous slide, as you can see. Now I'm actually hitting those keys on the keyboard, of course. So you can try up and down on your keyboard. You can try left and right. Now other keys that work is page up and page down. Page down will take me to my next slide. And page up will take me to my previous slide. Now, some of you also have the remote controls. Uh, so if you had the remote control, then you'll, you'll have next and previous on that as well. But not all of us have that. So you can use your, you can use your keyboard uh, up and down, left and right, or page up and page down. You can see I'm, I'm moving through this uh, presentation now. I hit my up and down arrow keys. Now, this is an interesting one. When we're running our presentation, what if I uh, want to black out the screen temporarily I can hit the B key on my keyboard. I just hit the B key and that blacks out the screen. When I want to bring the screen back again, I'll hit the B key again and now it's back. Another key that works in the same regard is the W key. So if I hit the W key, that'll white out the screen. Then if I hit the W key again, that'll bring it back. Now, if you hit the A key, when you're running the presentation, I'm going to hit the A key and then that demonstrates the, that turns on the mouse or that turns the mouse on or off the A key. And now my mouse is back, as you can see. All right. Now, let's say you want to go to a specific slide. You can right click on that slide and then you go into where it says see all slides. And then you pick the slide that you want to jump to. So I'll pick on slide three, and then you can see how it jumped to slide three. Now, what if you actually want to see the slide number on your slides? Maybe that's the next thing that we can do in our presentation. Now, when you're done running your presentation, I'm going to hit the escape key. All right, if I hit escape, now we're back to what we call normal view. And you can see your thumbnails over here on the left-hand side. And I'm just going to click on any of those thumbnails and then I can go back and forth among those slides, of course. Now let's talk about this left hand side for a second. This is called uh, the slide, the thumbnails. Uh, this is really helpful. If I want to copy a slide, I can right click on that slide. Now you could do a copy and paste, but a really quick way to do it is one step. You pick on duplicate slide. 
you see how you have an exact copy of that slide. Sometimes a slide might be very similar to another slide. So instead of making a slide from scratch, I'll just duplicate that slide and then just change the duplicate. Now I can also delete that slide. I'm going to right click on that slide and I'll pick on delete. Good. Now sometimes, sometimes a slide is, uh, you want to hide it, but you don't want to delete it. That means if you hide it, you can use it in the future. It's just not going to show the next time that you run the actual presentation. So if I want to hide this slide, for example, I can right click on it and then I'll pick on the word hide, hide slide. Now I can tell that that slide is hidden. If you look really closely, I'll zoom in for you again. You can kind of see that three is crossed out. That means that slide is hidden. That means it's not going to show when you actually run your presentation. Now, if I, uh, let's zoom back out again. If I want to not hide that slide, I'm going to right click and I'll pick on hide slide again. And then you can see it's not crossed out anymore. So this is all possible through these uh, thumbnails over on the left. Uh, very useful tool over there. Of course, I can go back and forth. So that's what I meant by the PowerPoint views. Just managing those. Uh, to run the show, of course, you pick on slideshow and you pick on from the beginning or from the current slide. Now, another way to get to those same choices is down here at the bottom. Here I can get to my notes page right there. There's my mouse over here. Here's a normal view. Here's the slide sorter view. And then this one will run the slideshow. Now this one will run the slideshow from the current slide. So if I click on that little screen down there, then notice how that will run the slideshow from the current slide. Now we're back in slideshow mode. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the escape key again. And now we're back, back to normal view. Now, in this case, everybody, I want to go back to the actual presentation that I made for, for this uh, class. I'm going to pick on the view menu. When you have more than one presentation open, you pick on the word switch windows right there, and then you can go back and forth. So we're always multitasking. Uh, so we can always go back and forth among the presentations like that. And now here's the one that I made, you know, for this presentation. Now, uh, I want to show you how, uh, if you already have an existing presentation, then you can copy and paste from the existing presentation into, uh, into the new one. Let's try an example like that. So let's say, uh, I like this slide and I want to copy it from here into the other presentation. Now I could pick more than one slide by holding down my shift key and then selecting multiple slides over here on the left. I'm going to right click on that slide and I'll pick on the word copy. Now let's move over to the other presentation. I'll pick on view and then uh, switch windows and I'll pick on presentation one. Now let's say I want that after slide four. So I'll click after, I mean, uh, after slide three, I'm going to click after slide three and then we'll right click there. Now look at my mouse for a second. I can say paste and use the destination theme, or I could say use the original source. So you have to decide which one of those is going to work for you. Let, let's this time we'll use the destination theme, and then it just came right over. So you can easily copy and paste from one presentation to another. That'll save you a lot of time. Now, one thing I mentioned that I, I, I want to go back to, I want to show you how you would turn the slide the slide number on so it shows up automatically on each slide. What we'll do at this point is we'll pick on the insert menu, insert. Then you come over here and you pick in the word slide number right there. And then you'll have this window. Now, by the way, if you had picked in the word date and time, it would have given you this exact same window. Now, let's say I do want to have the date and time there. So I'll pick on date and time. Now, if you say update automatically there, it'll always show you the current date. And, and I am recording this on April 13th of 2018. So this, this way, it'll always show the current date. If you want uh, a date to always be the same date, then that's when you would pick on the word fixed right there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick on the word slide number. Now, notice down here, it says don't show on the title slide. 
So if you don't want that to show on your first slide, then you would check that box. All right, so that's up to you if you wanted to uh, choose that. And if you wanted something special on your footer, that's at the bottom of the slide, then you can put a message there as well. So maybe I'll type in something like PowerPoint basics. Good. Let's see how this is going to look. So the way I got to this window is I picked in the word insert. Now you could have picked in the word date and time, or you could have picked in the word slide number. And both of those will bring you to the same screen. Then I did pick in the word date and time there. I did pick on the word update automatically, so it'll show you the, always the current date of when you're running that presentation. Then I chose the word slide number. I chose the word footer. And then I typed in the word PowerPoint basics just to see what the footer is going to look like. Now notice where my mouse is going to go this time. I'm going to say apply to all. So it will put those items on all slides. Otherwise, if you just want it on your current slide, you would just put in the word apply. But let's do apply to all. Let's see what that looks like. If you look down here, I do have the date, I do have the word PowerPoint basics, and I do have the number four. Now that should also show up when I run my presentation. So I'll pick on view. Actually, I'll pick on the word slideshow. I'll say from the beginning. Good. Now it has the date and the title and the slide number on each slide. That, that does help a lot. Now I can just I just hit the down arrow key to move to the next slide and so on. Excellent. When I'm done running my presentation, I'll hit the escape key and we're back to here again. All right, so that was a really good one. Insert. And then we have um, either the date and time or the slide number right there. Now let's go back. Uh, I want to show you how to build a bullet list and a number list onto your slide. I'm going to go to another new slide. So here, remember how I added the new slide icon on the quick access toolbar. If that wasn't there, you can find the new slide icon under the home menu, of course, right there. Now this time I actually want to add a blank slide and a new slide at the same time. So watch what I'll do. I'll click in the pull down where it says new slide and I'll make it pick on the word blank. So that added a new slide that's blank at the same time. So that way you don't have to add the new slide and then choose the layout. You're doing those in one step. Now, remember what I said about adding text to your slides, you have to add a text box. So let's pick on the insert menu and I'll pick in the word text box and I'll click over here. Now, follow my mouse up here. You can see how we have the bullets and we have the numbers. So you make a text box and then you pick on the bullet list up there. And now we're on a bullet list. So I'm gonna type in some of the states. Uh, so I live in Pennsylvania here in the United States. Now I'm going to type in some of the states that are close to me. So um, I live very close to New Jersey. When I hit the enter key, it'll just go to the next line on the bullet. And um, I live very close to New York. I live uh, very close to Delaware. And then on the other side of uh, Pennsylvania, I have Ohio. I'm on the Philadelphia side. Uh, on the west side, we have Ohio and we have West Virginia. So I'm making a basic bullet list. Let's go ahead and enhance that now. Now, let's say in Pennsylvania, I want to start adding the cities for Pennsylvania. So watch how I'll do this. Uh, I'm going to click at the end of the word Pennsylvania. I'm going to hit the enter key again. Now, I'd like to go to the next level of the bullet. So what you do is you're going to pick on indent over here, or it says increase list level, or you can also hit the tab key on your keyboard. Either way will work just fine. I'm going to click on this uh, increase the list level icon. Good. Now I'll type in Philadelphia. See how it's coming in in the sub list. Then we have uh, Harrisburg is the actual capital. Then we have Pittsburgh and so on. Now I'm going to go to the next line on my bullet by hitting the enter key. If I want to return to the previous level, then I'll hit the icon that's pointing to the left. I'll say decrease, or you can do shift tab on your keyboard. Either one will work. Now I can go to the next level in. 
you see here, uh, I can easily uh, go to the next level in by picking on the icon pointing to the right. So I can go in. You can go in as many levels as you wanted to, or I can go back out again with this one. Now I'm on the outer level. Now I'll type in another state. Let's say uh, I'll type in Florida. Good. So um, you can start to see how you're going to make an indented bullet list. Now I'd like to show you how you have many options for your actual bullets. Let's go ahead and highlight these uh, text from Philadelphia to Pittsburgh. Now, of course, a lot of your normal formatting is under the home menu. So you can just select the text and format it the way you, you're used to over here with the uh, icons. But let me show you how you have many more choices for your bullets. I'm going to click on the pull down next to the bullets. And then here are some more choices. But let me show you where there's even more beyond that. You pick where it says bullets and numbering. And now uh, in this case, everybody, I just moved that window. Uh, I can pick on the word customize. And then you, you can use any of these symbols for your bullets. That gives you a lot more choices. Now let me show you where there's a lot more. I'm going to click on this pull down for the font. And you pick a special font towards the bottom. There's actually three special fonts that give you a lot more bullets. Let's find one that's called Wing, uh, Webdings, Wingdings, Wingdings 2. And now there's even a Wingdings 3. Let's try uh, Wingdings 1. And now any one of these can be used as a bullet. So I think this presentation is going very well. So I'm going to put in the happy face. And I'm going to click on OK. And I'll pick on OK again. And notice how the bullet is now the happy face. So watch how I got into there. Because you have so many more choices. I'm going to go ahead and highlight the bullets. Then I'll come back up to the pull down. Uh, and then I'll pick on uh, any one of these, but I'll pick on bullets and numbering. And then I'll pick on the word customize. Now you can use a normal font, but if you go to your fonts that are called webdings, let's try some of those. See how there's a lot more there or wingdings or now there's even wingdings two and three. That gives you many more pictures that you can use. Any one of those can be your bullets. Now let me share where there's even more beyond that. I'm going to pick on the word cancel right there and I'll pick on the word picture. Now then you can get uh, bullets from the internet. So for example, if I say online pictures, then you can search on the internet and you can search for any kind of phrase that you're looking for. So let's say I like to have a bullet about computers. Just as an example, if I spell it right, that would help, right? Computers. Okay. And now, okay, good. Uh, I found a lot of pictures that I could use. How about that happy face uh, using the, uh, the computer? I'm going to click on that. Any one of these would work. I'll pick on insert. And now look, it actually put that picture onto my bullet. So I wanted to show you how, where you have a lot more bullets than, than what you think is available. So that's what we call a bullet list. Now I'm going to move this over to the side. Now let's do a number list in a similar way. So I'll pick on uh, the, we're going to add another text box. So I'll pick on insert and I'll pick on the word text box. So you add your text box first and now follow my mouse up here and we'll pick on the one, two, three to make it a numbered list. Okay. So let's say, now we'll talk about some of the um, some of the cities that are around this area. We have Philadelphia. I'm going to hit the enter key. Uh, Pennsylvania also has Harrisburg. We have Pittsburgh. So each time that I hit the uh, the enter key, of course, it'll go to the next line of the number list. Uh, we have Reading. We have Scranton. Uh, we have Erie and so on. Now, in the same way, I can make a sub list from here. So let's say I'm going to click where it's at the end of Philadelphia. I'm going to hit the enter key. Now, if I wanted to indent in, remember what I showed you, you come up here 
and you pick on the arrow pointing to the right, or you can hit your tab key. Either way is fine. So in Philadelphia, we have a couple of sports teams. We have the Phillies, and then we have the Eagles. We have the Flyers, and we have the Sixers. Those are our major sports teams. All right. Now, if I go to, I'm going to go to the end of Pittsburgh. I hit the enter key there and I'm going to hit the tab key or I can click on this icon up there and Pittsburgh has the Steelers and they have the Pirates and they have the Penguins. Now let's see how we can change. Um, instead of make, saying that one, two, three, four there, I would like that to say A, B, C, and D. So again, I'm going to highlight those items. You click on the pull down for the number list, and then you have different choices there. And this time, let's go with ABC. Good. And I'll do the same thing over here. I want to highlight those. You pick on the pull down, and we'll pick on whichever one that you like there. So I wanted to show you, I wanted to make sure you knew how to do a number list and a bullet list. And now, this is a text box. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. You see the actual text box. Now, this is what I showed you before. You can rotate that up here. See how I'm going to rotate that now? Or when you see the text box, if you want to move it, you move your mouse to the actual box, and then you can just drag it from there, as you can see. Now, this is kind of interesting. Notice when I move it, it's going to help you uh, align things with the slide. Let's say I want to make sure it's going to be aligned with that other one. So watch, I'm going to move it. And as I approach that item, see how that red line came up? then I know that those items are going to be aligned. So that's a recent addition. They probably added that in, in uh, PowerPoint 2013 or so. But isn't that interesting? If I just kind of move this around, now you see that other line that come up? There it is. That means it's on the center of the slide. So that, that is perfectly centered on the slide. In fact, if I move this up a little bit, now I'll see another red line going across right there and then I can tell it's on the center of the slide and it's also lined up with this other item so you really need to look for those as you move things around see now that red line that we just saw going across let's see if I, that means it's kind of centered uh, in that section of the slide right there proportion to the other one and then if I look for another see how you get these they're, they're great helps this is going to line it up with that text down at the bottom this text is going to line up with the middle of that one. And, you know, just, just kind of use those lines as guides when you move things around. Very, very helpful, as you can see. All right, so there's a text box, and there's a, a number list, and there's a, a bullet list as well. Hopefully you've got some ideas of how to manage those. Let's go back to our other presentation, which gives me an outline of what we're doing for the class. So I'll pick on View, Switch Windows, and I'll go back to the other one. So I, I took you on a tour of the screen. I showed you how to add slides. Oh, by the way, notice how on this, um, this slide, I have the red uh, rectangle to really highlight something on the slide. Let me show you how you would do something like that. So I'm gonna go back to my other presentation again. I'll pick on view and then switch windows. We'll go back to the other one. Now, by the way, I haven't given that one a good name yet. So I know I haven't saved that because usually I would give it a better name. Well, saving is just going to be what you what you would usually do. I'm just picking the save icon over there. Or of course, you can say Control S on the keyboard. Now, the first time that you save something, you want to give it a good name. So I'll pick on the word browse. And then I'll type in uh, PowerPoint Basics as the name. Good. And now I can see how it has a better name up there. And the default file extension for PowerPoint is PPTX. Uh, now, let's say I want to have a rectangle around, uh, around these items. Well, first of all, the text box itself can have its own rectangle. It's probably already there. If I click on the text box, you'll see the rectangle. If I want that to be, to be more pronounced, I'm going to click on the actual box, the actual text box. Then I'll pick on the word format. And then 
the shape outline would be the border of that particular text box. So let's let's pronounce that. I'll pick on shape outline. I'll make it red. Good. Now uh, I really would like that to be a, a a larger line. So I'll pick where it says shape outline. Now in this case, I'll pick in the word weight, and then I'll I'll make it a thicker line, as you can see. So that was really quick and easy. Watch again. I'm going to click in the text box. We see the rectangle. I'll click in the rectangle. And then I'll pick in the format menu. Now the shape fill is like the background color. So maybe I want that to have a gray fill. Good. And notice how when I move my mouse around these, it'll show me what that looks like. That's going to be called preview mode. I like that feature a lot. So uh, I'll pick on maybe this light gray over there. Good. Now I want that to have the red outline again. So I'll pick on shape outline and then use any one of those. Use the red one. If I want that to be thicker, pick on the word shape outline, go with weight, and I'll pick on one of the, th uh, the thicker lines there. Good. Now, what if, um, let's go back to where it says PowerPoint presentation, this slide over here. What if I just want to draw a rectangle around that item? That's what I did on the other slides that came with the presentation. Here's what I'll do. I'll pick on the insert menu, and then use something that's called a shape. All right, so I'll pick on shapes and then you have many geometric shapes. So I'll, I'm going to pick on the rectangle right there, or you could use any one of these other ones, of course. So I'll pick on the rectangle. Now I'm going to draw a rectangle with my mouse. I'm going to hold down my left mouse and just kind of draw a rectangle around that whole thing. Good. Now you see how it came in. So I, I want to change the, the shape fill. So I'll pick on the word format. I'll pick on shape fill and I'll say no fill. So the fill color is gone, but if I want to change the color of the border, I say shape outline and we'll go with red again. If I want to make that thicker, then I'll go back to the weight. Now you can make that a dot line or a dash line where it says dashes, or I'll pick on weight and make it a thicker line. So that's called a shape, everybody. So what you do is you pick on insert and you pick on shapes. Let's do a, a, a circle, for example, or an oval. Now I'm going to draw an oval with my mouse. And you can see that clearly. When you click on that shape, it'll give you the format menu. And then you have many choices from there. I can change the shape fill. This is the background color. I can change the shape outline, which is the border color. Now you have special effects for these. And there are some formats that are built right in. These are called shape styles, as you can see. And you can try some of those as well. Now, I could even add text to that shape. So I'll, I'll say, uh, welcome. And now I'm going to move that shape. Now, see how those red lines are coming up to help you line it up with this other one. And now that one looks like it's going to be perfectly in the center. Excellent. All right, so the shapes can be useful for you in your presentation. You pick on the insert menu and you pick on shapes. And that is how I drew the rectangles in the other presentation. So if I go back to view and then switch windows and go back to PowerPoint basics, uh, PowerPoint basics webinar, then you can see how that's how I would have drawn, drawn the rectangles around these, uh, around these slides. Um, now this is where, this is where I showed you the PowerPoint views. So I picked on the view menu and you see your different views over here. Now on the next slide, uh, then we're in this case, we're doing the text box. So I showed you that one as well. And then we can see how this is where I was showing you how to line up your text boxes. So we picked on the format menu. After you select your items, you pick on format and then align, and that'll help you line them up or even uh, make them evenly spaced. That's what we mean by distribute. So that's what these slides are talking about. Oh, and now this is where I, I showed you how to do the bullet list. The next slide shows you how to do the numbered list. Uh, now, what if you want to have a picture on your slide? Let's go back to the presentation that we were working with. So I'll pick on the view menu and I'll pick on switch windows again. Now, another way you can do that is down here at the bottom of your screen. 
if you pick on the PowerPoint icon down at the bottom, then you can see the multiple presentations that are open at this time. And I, I can just go back and forth among those. So whichever way that you like to do it is fine. I can either pick on the PowerPoint icon down there and go back and forth among the open PowerPoint presentations there, or I can pick on my view menu and pick on switch windows over there. Let's go back to PowerPoint basics. Let's go to a different slide. I like to add a picture to this slide. So we'll pick on the insert menu and we'll pick on pictures. Now this one assumes that the picture is on your computer or we can get pictures from online as well. Let's pick on pictures. Now I forget what I have on this particular computer. Let's see if I have, if I have anything. Uh, so uh, let's say I'll go with, um, now these actually, uh, here's a, a PC logo that'll work perfectly and I'll pick on insert. And now there's that picture. Now, obviously I can move that picture around and then those lines are coming up to help me line it up with other items on the slide. And of course you can also resize that picture as well with the resizing handles. Now, if you are gonna make that picture larger, try to find pictures that are higher resolution uh, because it, it, it will make a difference. You want to have a high res picture when you make them uh, uh, especially larger. But you can see I can move that picture around. Then here's that rotate, so I can rotate the picture, as you can see, right? So a lot of great choices for your pictures. Now we can go a lot further with the pictures. Uh, for example, when I pick in the picture, I pick in the format menu, and then there's many things you can do with your pictures on the format menu, as you can see. Now, when I run that slide, that picture should be there. I'd like to move it maybe over here, right in the middle. See how that line came up? No, it's right in the middle of the slide. Perfect. Good. Now uh, I'll say view, I'll say slideshow, and then from the beginning, here's that first slide. I'm gonna hit the page down and go to the next slide, and there's the picture. Now I wanna show you a special kind of picture that's called an animated GIF. You can find many of these animated GIFs on, uh, online. You just go ahead and search for the word animated GIF and gives it spelled G-I-F. And then maybe you type in the topic of what you're looking for. So if I said animated GIF business and search for that on Google, you would probably find a lot of this. I'm gonna, I have one on my computer, so I'll say insert picture. Now here's, here's this one that's called a uh, headbanger. And uh, I'm gonna pick in the word insert and right now it looks normal, right? But I'm gonna go ahead and expand that with the sizing handle. When you put it on the slideshow, at first it looks normal, but if that is an animated GIF, the animation will happen when we run the slideshow. So I'll pick on the slideshow menu, and I'll say from the current slide, and notice how it actually is a headbanger. I'm sure we've all felt like that <laughs> using our computers, you know? But there, th th that is uh, called an animated GIF. And when it is an animated GIF, PowerPoint will show the uh, animation when you run your actual presentation. So that was interesting. Let's try another one. I'm gonna delete that one. In this case, I'll pick on insert picture. Here's another one I have on my computer. You can see it has a GIF extension. Uh, and you can find a lot of these on the internet if you just do a search. I, I know this one is going to be animated as well. I'll pick on insert. And of course, I can resize that or move it around the slide. When I run my show, I'll pick on slideshow from the current slide. You can see that one is animated. Hopefully, after you watch this presentation, your PowerPoint skills will increase and that'll get you better at your job and that'll get you more cash in hand. <laughs> All right, so anyway, you can see the cash is flipping. It's called an animated GIF. So anyway, I want to show you how to add pictures to your slides. Let's go back to our other presentation and I'll pick on uh, the PowerPoint Basics webinar. Good. And here you can see right the insert picture. There's also online pictures. There's many things you can get. Here's also where I got insert shapes and so on. Let's go to our next slide. Now I wanna show you a great way to quickly make your presentation look very pro uh, professional. So let's go back to our other presentation. I'll pick on view, 
and then switch windows and then the PowerPoint basics again. Right now, the slides have just been black and white, which is fine. But we want to add some life into our presentation now. So at this time, you'll pick on your design menu up here. You see the word design. Now you're going to see it comes with many themes. So in this case, I'm going to click on the pull down for the themes. And these just give you a really quick ways to format your presentation in a very professional way. I, I, I like this one over here. It's just nice and clean, very professional looking. A lot of people use that one. And notice as soon as I clicked on that, every single slide in the presentation now has that theme. And I gave it, you know, instant professional look in one click. So I put them in the design menu. Now you can try some of these other ones. See how when I move my mouse across those, that preview mode kicks in. Now, by the way, let me show you how you would turn that preview mode on if that's not happening for you. It's actually going to be an option. So I'll pick on the word file and the word options, file options. Then over here, you make sure it's checked where it says enable live preview. I do like to have that one on. It's going to be under the general tab of your options and right over here it says enable live preview. I'm going to click on OK now. So that's why when I move my mouse across these, it does show me what that's going to look like. That's called preview mode. So notice how you have many themes that are available. You can find many more of these themes online. There's, there's, there's lots of them out there actually. Now, a lot of them are free online and then some people, you know, actually design these and you'd have to pay for them. But I bet you can find a lot of free ones as well. Or maybe your company already has uh, one that you should use. Ask your company if they already have a theme that you should use. And they'll tell you about that. But notice how as I move my mouse across these, it'll show you. What, I like that one right there. Now, let me show you how we can go even further beyond that. Once you pick a theme, then you can pick a variant, which means you can pick different colors for that theme and different fonts and so on. So, for example, I'll pick in the word colors. Now you have all these built-in color schemes. Just move your mouse across these and you can see what those are going to look like. So I have the same theme just with a different color scheme. You see what's happening there? So I kind of like, uh, how about this one? This is uh, pretty nice. I like that shade, shade of blue. Excellent. Now, if you wanted to make up your own, you could do that. I'm going to click on that pull down over here. Then I'll pick on the word colors. If you wanted to make up your own, you can pick on the word customized colors. And then really pick your own. Personally, <laughs> that's not my favorite choice. I like the ones that come with it. But if you're feeling more creative, you can make up your own right there, as you can see. Now, another thing you can do is you can change the fonts of your theme. So I'll pick on the word fonts. And then you have different fonts. So you can see how that's making a difference as well. That one's not bad. I like that one right there. Good. So you can really customize these themes to the nth degree. Then you can even change the background of the slide. So I would recommend the themes. You can change these over here if you wanted to. And then if you wanted to, you could change the background of the slide as well. So I'll pick on the word format background. And then you, you have many things you can do with the background of the slide. You can pick a different color. <coughs> you can pick a different color. Uh, you can pick a different pattern and try some of this. And those, now this one is called a picture or a texture. Then I would come over here and, uh, then I can pick a different texture and maybe you recognize some of those. A lot of people use the green marble, right? Maybe you've seen that one before. That's called a texture. So the way I got to this screen was I picked on the design menu and I picked the word format background. And then that was called picture or a texture. So a picture could be in the background of the slide as well. Now, in this case, let's go back to um, the solid fill. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead. If I want that to be the background for all of the slides, then I'll say apply to all down here. Good. All right. So actually, I'm not really crazy about that. So I'm going to undo that. Undo, of course, is always available for you. And you can undo to the last part of the last time that you saved your document. I'm going to undo a couple times. And That's the one I like, where it was with the original theme. Notice how on your design menu, you can pick the themes. You can you can change the, the, the identity of the themes with the colors and the fonts and, and special effects. And you can change the background of your slides as well. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this window away. And at this point we can close that window. Good. So we really showed you how to build your PowerPoint uh, right from the beginning. So to add a new slide, of course, I'll pick on home and then pick on new slide. Then when you're, when you're on a slide, you can change the layout over there. Or you can choose the layout as soon as you make the new slide. Now, remember to add text to a slide, you'll use a text box under the insert menu right there. And the insert menu has many other things you can add to the slide as well. Here's where we did the date and time and the slide number. Here's how we added uh, pictures and, and other things onto your slides. Then uh, your design menu is very important. That's where we change the theme. Then you can even customize the theme over here where it says variants. You can uh, customize that with colors and fonts. This is also where I showed you how to change the format background. Then another menu that will be obviously very important for you is the home menu. This is where we format. So if I click on that item, the text box, then I can pick on home. And you have your, a lot of your formatting there, including the number list, the bullet list like we went over. Okay. And then another important menu is the view menu. The view menu is where we were able to change the views, as you can see. Uh, this is called normal view. And then the run your show, we picked on slideshow view and then from the beginning. I want to thank everybody for coming out today.